Hey, how you doing? Welcome to another chapter of Comments from the Peanut Gallery. <laughs> On the way to Galilee, the Galilee Gathering. And again, this is this will be in the uh, book and pages uh, storyteller format, okay? The cover of a book. The cover of a book. People often read a man's life and weigh him by the cover of the book, what they see on the surface, as if it's sitting on a table for all to read. What's inside? Huh. Just look at the cover of the book. You know what's inside. The goat herder. Sheep and goats, goat and sheep. It's what he's got. It's what he's always had. People watched him forever. Five years, six, seven, ten years. Some had known him 15 years, others 20. Other 20 years. Some even 25 years had observed Emil, the goat herder. <laughs> quite sure they knew him well. A very resilient man, steadfast. Those who could call him friend prized the friendship. There wasn't many. Often he chose, hmm, often the friends came in groups <laughs> as Lazarus, <laughs> Mary and Martha, or the house of Simon. Friends, Emil the goat herder. He lived in a one room. They saw him. People that looked, they knew. He lived out near the tombs of the dead. Meticulous in his manner, steadfast, consistently constant is what they saw. The few that had ever been inside of his home found it, oh, so amazingly packaged. Cleanliness, <laughs> order, neat, even in a small one room. They go, this is a unique man, nothing out of place, but alone. No wife, no lover. No son, no daughter. He lived his life alone, except when he would, <laughs> those groups that he saw. <laughs> the house of Simon, Simon, some of Simon's uh, workforce, call them slaves, call them uh, employees, call them. Some had a special place in the heart of this goat herder Jesus had just been speaking with Simon and Cleopas. And something, something in what they said, something in Jesus' response had tripped a trigger in that old man. And he, his countenance, it changed. There was question in his eyes. There was wonder that came to the surface. What? What am I hearing? What? What are you two? You two are describing something. I have heard rumors of it. People, people who have died that have wandered the streets of Jerusalem and others that have seen them. Simon, you saw your nurse. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> My favorite goat herder. <laughs> the world has changed around you today. <laughs> Emo, you have a question. What is it? <laughs> you have a thought. 
What is it in your eyes that I see? Hey, Mo. How come, how come there's trouble? Why in this place of all places in this day of victory? Hey, Mo. Why is there trouble in your eyes? Lord, I want to know why, responded Emil. Lord, I want to know why. Simon and Cleopas has spoken of Simon especially, his old nurse, saw him. She went to him, and I want to know Not to take anything away from him. No, this was a wonderful thing. It's a magnificent thing that Simon was able to be part of, and I'm so glad for him that he got to see his childhood nurse, Anna, as she took the scenic route to my father's house. But I want to know why there is, there is one, there is one, Jesus. Amo, I'm gonna stop you for a moment right here, Amo. I know there is one near and dear to your heart. Before I answer you, I want to say something to you about this man that you think you know. You see him as the goat herder with sheep, sheep and goats, lambs to the temple, lambs prepared to be offered up as a sacrifice, blood sacrifice, a thing which he will no longer have to do. And I think he's glad to be done with that chore. But this man that you think you know, <laughs> Emo, what? You turned, what, uh, 50 years old? <laughs> Just this year? Yes. This man. This shepherd, this magnificent shepherd, was in the field at night when he was just a young man. Hey, well, you were newlywed at that time, weren't you? Young bride. But this man was in the field, watching over his uncle's sheep. The night that I took my first breath of air on this planet, and angels announced to this man, among other shepherds, my arrival. And he, he, this old shepherd, was among a small handful that came to see me only hours after I took my first breath on this planet, on this earth. Emil, the actual moment because I had to enter an earth suit from conception forward, I, who always was, always will be, I had to empty myself to enter that earth suit. Uh, in my human, I'll say, the human mind <laughs> of then, I, I couldn't say that I remembered when you were there, but Mama Mary, she told me. 
She told me. And then to escape Herod's awfulness, Mary and Joseph, my oh, guardian's mom on this earth, okay, they took me to Egypt. And you, Nemo, you were not aware of what was coming next. We tried to warn. We put it in the book. We did our best to warn those to be prepared for what Herod would do. Yes. Okay. Jesus, yes. I found those words, but it was too late. You left this to, you, to go to Egypt. They took you to Egypt when you were what? Almost two? And my son, my son, who was almost two, they came. Herod's men came. They killed him. They murdered him right in front of Rachel and I. Oh, God. Amo. You know, you know I took them both to my father. They are with him on the ship now. You know that. Yes, Lord. Of that I am sure, that that is where they are. But why? Why? Anna, Anna stopped to see Simon. Why didn't Rachel stop to see me? And Amo, if she had stopped to see you and you had understanding of where she was going, you she and your son, would you have pressed to find a way somehow to go with her? I've got chores for you, Emu. <laughs> you are the most magnificent shepherd <laughs> since David walked this earth. Emu. There are things that you carry that, and chores that are very soon. Oh, I so want to tell you even what's coming. Lord, Jesus, I've known you from the first, I, I was watching for you. When you arrived and I went to see you, I was watching for you when you just a, a squalling little thing in the manger. <laughs> I trust you. To see Rachel again, I would give every breath I breathe just to see her once more. Hey, Mo, that, that day is coming. Just, just not yet. Okay? Just not yet. Okay? I trust you. <laughs> but then... Can you tell me? Can you tell me of where they are? Tell me of my father's house. Oh. 
Hey, Ma, you ask an interesting question. You know I've been there and back. You know I presented my blood on the heavenly mercy siege, <laughs> presented it to my father, the covenant cut, the covenant ratified, articles of the covenant declared, this new covenant in which you walk. You know I did that. You know I've been there. <laughs> you know I was there before I came to this earth in the first place. Okay. What can I tell you? Let's see. Name all the... The house, my father's house is magnificent. Looking at it from the outside in. <laughs> oh, it's magnificent. It's color coded on the doors. <laughs> the walls are color coded, Emil, so you know what door to go in. Which gate? <laughs> oh, Emil, you've never seen anything but this earth and the stars above and the sky. How can I tell you of my father's house? It travels through space. <laughs> oh, it's out in the heavens. <laughs> in the heavens. The foundations of, oh, the foundations of my father's house, they hold it up. Twelve foundations. <laughs> oh, Emo, how can I tell you? Of, oh, you know horses, horses, powerful horses. You know buildings, you've seen buildings. <laughs> you've seen temples, you see in the temple in Jerusalem. In my father's house, there is no temple. He and I are the temple of it. <laughs> but horses, <laughs> horses to you, they mean strength and power, okay? Collectively, if you have a team of horses, oh, you've got six horses in a team. That's a magnificently powerful team of horses. Amo, the foundations that hold my father's house in place, in space, and move it around through the heavens. <laughs> each foundation, each foundation of which there are 12, and they are color-coded. <laughs> each foundation is like a hundred thousand horses. Each one, and there's 12. A foundation is something that holds it up. These magnificent <laughs> teams of horses in the sky, foundations that hold it up, they are quite amazing, Emo. And in that ship, this joy that was set before me, the joy set before me, <laughs> I endured. <laughs> It's written, for the joy set before me, I endured the cross. Yeah. To be captain of that ship. And now that ship has people in it, millions of people that I took from the place of protection to that ship. Around the plateau meeting place, <laughs> the mountain top. <laughs> observatory <laughs> not a sound could be heard every eye closed tight seeing Jesus and listening to him through the eyes of Emo the goat herder <laughs> the one they thought they knew <laughs> watching listening drinking in every word Jesus spoke about his father's house. Twelve foundations that hold it up. <laughs> Horsepower like you have never in your wildest dreams imagined. <laughs> so far beyond what you can ask or think, Emil. And that is just looking at it from the outside. Gates, 
massive, huge case, absolutely huge. Doorways three miles in diameter. If you get back a thousand, two thousand miles away and look closely, those gates from that distance, each one looks like a pearl. <laughs> like a pearl of great price. Yeah, it's a pearl. When it looks like from 2,000 miles away, each gate looks like a pearl with a little hole drilled through it to thread it through to make this beautiful necklace. <laughs> oh, but you get close. <laughs> and those gates <laughs> that take an, an entire for you on this planet, you would call it a day, one day just to close the gate. But they're open all the time. Oh. To help you understand. <laughs> oh, airlocks and gates and space and, and this magnificent house of my father that travels through space. Heavens, the heavens declare the glory of God. Yeah. Our Father, who art in space, hallowed be thy name. <laughs> get your thinking, Emil, get your thinking off of this planet. <laughs> we made the stars, the galaxies, the universes. <laughs> And your wife and your son are on the ship, and I'm the captain. For now, I'm here with you for the next few days <laughs> and for the chores that are coming. But for now, your wife and son are on that ship. <laughs> a ship. Your house is like my father's house is like a ship in space, like a ship on the ocean. But a ship in space, and that's... And, and Jesus, you're, you're the captain of that ship. The captain. You're the captain. And the people on it are the... What? The crew? <laughs> Amo, she is a magnificent ship. She is an awesome ship. <laughs> Would you like to know, Emo, what they are seeing inside that ship that is larger than the moon you watch in the nighttime sky? That ship? You know, nobody, nobody walks on the... Oh, you can go out through the gates of the ship, but it is a very protected place. Evo. Inside. Inside. <laughs> they are, your wife and son are inside that ship. Would you like to know, Emo, what it's like on the inside of that ship that is larger than the moon that you watch in the nighttime sky, Emo? Oh, yes, Lord, I'd like to know what it's like on the inside of the ship. Is You said, you said one time, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I heard you say that. I know you've said that many times, but I've heard you say that. Tell me what it's like inside my father's house, okay? So one, what you see around you here, what do you see? You see trees, you see lakes, rivers, you see that <laughs> around you here, on, inside the ship, inside the ship. You cannot tell the difference of the surroundings that you see now, you cannot tell the difference of whether you're on planet Earth or on one of the decks of my father's house. <laughs> the ship. 
You can't tell the difference, Emil. You can't. You look at the trees, except there's no blood-sucking bugs. There's no noxious weeds. There's no nothing that is stealing, sacrificing, or destroying. Nothing like that. That isn't there. No sickness, no disease. Nothing of the curse will ever, nothing of the curse will ever, ever, we have guarded against that in a thousand ways. No sickness, no disease, no curse ever, ever on that ship, ever. No trace of Lucifer and his principles and philosophies and his evil ways, none of it will ever be on that ship, always, never. Never and forever. <laughs> Only life is the way life is. I have it. Uh, there. Okay. The same as what's around me, Jesus. Uh, that's what it's like on the ship. How? How? <laughs> it doesn't sound very big. <laughs> well, as big as the moon, you say. But how big is that? Uh, how is it? What's the design of it? You know, is it one floor and you just look all the way up at the ceiling way up there? Is it round? Is it square? Is it, what is it? Amo, you ask a lot of questions. You started this with just one. You want to know where they are. And now you want, uh, okay. Are you sitting down, Emil? No, you're standing here looking and you're pacing back and forth. <laughs> like Clipper, your dog, just bouncing back and forth like you can hardly contain yourself. Well, I guess I understand. From a distance, or even, well, you can't see it if you get close up to it because you're too close. You got to get back a ways. Or if from a... <laughs> from 1,500 miles away and you look at it. Okay, my father's house. It's a giant cube in the sky. The height, the width, the depth, all are equal. Each way, 1,500 miles each way. It's huge. <laughs> Engines, oh, I told you they was like horses. Foundations, the foundations that hold it up that allow it, that cause it to move through the heavens. Remember, heavens are space and not a place. My father's house is a place and not space. But inside, there's lots of space inside. It looks like trees and rivers because it is trees and rivers and rocks. <sighs> And when you stand inside, no, you cannot see to the top. When you stand inside and look up, you see just like here, you see sky. You see sky. And you see, oh, look up to the trees and you see sky. And you see air blowing in the wind. You hear the wind. <laughs> what we have done, what we have made, what we... It's absolutely awesome. This ship of my father's, this Heaven Castle ship, full of lots of castles. You could call them castles, mansions, magnificent mansions. Okay. How big is it? Oh, this earth on which you walk, Emo. The floor space in my father's house. The floor space in my father's house. Grasp this thought, Emil, and think it. The floor space in my father's house, where your wife and son are, <laughs> Rachel and your boy. Three times, Emil. Three times what? Three times, Emil. <laughs> The floor space in my father's house is three times, yeah, three times what? <laughs> I 
Are you ready, Emil? The floor space in my father's house is, I like the number three. He likes the number three. <laughs> we like the number 12. Yeah, I know there's things you like, Jesus, and you like kind of sometimes it seems like you want to. <laughs> Will you tell me three times what? In my father's house, the heaven castle ship, the floor space in my father's house is three times the surface area of this planet Earth on which you walk. Jesus, God Almighty, that's a lot of space. It's really, it's, <laughs> it's really big. <laughs> and you say it's like, it's a ship and there's the captain. <sighs> And Rachel and my boy are there? Emo, there's one other little fragment of information I will give you. Your wife, your Rachel, more beautiful than the day you married her. And when you get there, Emo, to the ship, not for some time, I hope. But when you get there, you too will be more magnificent, stronger than you were in the day you married that beautiful woman. <laughs>